What is up, MTG Portal, and this afternoon we are talking about some new leaks for Shadows over Innistrad. Stay tuned, and I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, our first card is a flip card, and it is Aberrant Researcher. He is three colorless and a blue for a 3-2 flying human insect. That's an awkward combination. At the beginning of your upkeep, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. If it's an instant or sorcery card, transform Aberrant Researcher. Um, when he transforms, he does turn into a 5-4 with flying called Perfected Form. Alright, our next card up is Compelling Deterrence. At one colorless and one blue, instant speed. To return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, then that player discards a card if you control a zombie. For those who haven't already figured it out, zombies are making a definite resurgence in the Shadows over Innistrad block. Um, I'm going to be dropping one this afternoon that is my new personal favorite zombie. Um, comboed with Kalidus, I see some nasty zombie EDH deck techs and some standard zombies uh, definitely coming back in the, the spotlight. So it's really going to be interesting to see how this set uh, combos zombies and what decks get built around them. Our next guy here is Jeral's Masterpiece. Three colorless and two blue for a 7-7 zombie horde with flying. Jarl's Masterpiece gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. Pay three colorless and a blue to discard three cards. Return Jarl's Masterpiece from your graveyard to the battlefield tabs. Very interesting. Alright, moving right into white. Our first card is Declaration in Stone. One colorless and a white. Exile target creature and all other creatures its controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. For those who do not know what Investigate is, it's an ability introduced in Shadows over Innistrad. Um, you get to put a colorless artifact on the clue artifact onto the battlefield with pay two colorless and sacrifice it, draw a card. So basically, you get to X, or not exile, but you get to uh, investigate for X amount of cards as long as they're non token. Very cool. Alright, our next card in the white block is Bygone Bishop. He is two colorless and a white for a 2-3 spirit cleric with flying. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell with converted mana cost of three or less, investigate. So, very cool. Alright, moving right along to the only red card in this particular block for this video is Incorrible Use. Three colorless and two red for a 4-3 vampire with madness of two colorless and a red. Uh, madness being another ability brought back in Shadows of Randestrad. Uh, if you discard this card, discard it into exile. When you do, cast it for the madness cost or put it into your graveyard. So, very cool. Alright, and moving right into the artifacts. Our first up is Shards of Broken Glass. It's one colorless for a common uh, equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus zero. Whenever equipped creature attacks, you may put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Um, it does have one for an equip cost. Alright, next up we have Brain in a Jar. Two colorless for an artifact that allows you to pay one colorless and tap it, put a charge counter on Brain in a Jar. Then you may cast an instant or sorcery card with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Brain in a Jar from your hand without paying its mana cost. You may also pay three colorless and tap it to remove X charge counters from Brain in a Jar and scry X. I think this is a very powerful artifact. I'm really interested to see what formats it gets played in. Um, I can very easily see this card being played in EDH. It's got some power behind it. It really is just going to depend on how long you can stay on the board and how many counters you could really get on this card. But uh, let me know what you guys think. I'd like to hear what decks you're going to feature Brain in the Jar in. And at last, we come to my personal favorite artifact so far from this entire set. Uh, Tamio's Journal. It is five colorless. It's a legendary artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate. Put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield with pay two colorless, sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. Now, what gets cool is as those tokens start to add up, you may tap Tamio's Journal to sacrifice three clues, search your library for a card, and put that card into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Hello to an infinite tutor that will be going in every EDH deck that I possibly own. This is a godsend for EDH players, and it is freaking amazing. 
one of the coolest cards I've ever seen printed. Hands down. Like, I love everything, everything about Tamio's Journal. Alright, I have saved the best for last, which is the black block of our new uh, Shadows of Innistrad spoiler. Starting out with Hair of Falkreath. One colorless and a black for a 2-1 vampire. You may discard a card and transform Hair of Falkreath. Activate this ability only once each turn. She transforms to a 3-2 flag. Not the biggest powerhouse in the world, but a pretty sweet little vampire. I like her a lot. Next up, we have Pick the Brain for two colorless and a black. Target opponent reveals his or her hand. You may choose a non-land card from it and exile that card. It has Delirium. If there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, search that player's library, graveyard, and hand. For any number of cards with the same name as the exiled card, exile those cards. Then that player shuffles his or her library. Very cool. And ladies and gentlemen, the first mythic broken right here on MTG Portal for black is Relentless Dead. Two black for a 2-2 zombie. First of all, he has Menace. This creature cannot be blocked except by two or more creatures. Second of all, when Relentless Dead dies, you may pay black. If you do, return it to its owner's hand. That's already amazing. But his final ability is really, really what's going to make everyone go, oh my Jesus. When Relentless Dead dies, you may pay X. If you do, return another target zombie creature card with converted mana cost X from your graveyard to the battlefield. Welcome to an endless recursion of zombies. The only way to get rid of this guy is to exile him. Period. If you attach Lightning Greaves to this guy and you just go to town, reattach Greaves, go to town. Oh my god, Relentless Dead, you are my hero. Zombie Recursion. I, uh, the EDH decks that are going to be built around zombies, especially with Kalidus, is ridiculous. And this guy is a staple in any zombie any zombie format deck. Whether it's Standard, Legacy, Modern, or EDH. This guy is phenomenal. Thank you for watching our Shadows Over Innistrad Episode 5 Spoilers video. Uh, comments and suggestions, please leave them down below. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it. If you like me and the content we provide, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, go ahead and leave a comment down below so we know what we can do better. If you haven't subscribed to MTG Portal, please smash the subscribe button above. And as always, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing, and we'll talk to you all soon. Take care.